Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Grab your coffee. Let me know that you can hear me when you see me. Hopefully you're all out there. <clears throat> Good morning, family. Good morning. Hope everybody's good. Grab your coffee. We're going to talk for a couple minutes. We're not going to talk long. We're going to talk for a couple minutes, though. Grab your coffee. Let me know where you're at. Where are you, where are you joining us? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Never be bound again. I got my liberty. I'm finally free. Oh, why this song was in my spirit this morning when I got up? It was. You know, this is going to be one of the songs we worship at the concert of prayer. I'll start in just a minute. Just a minute. Well, let's work the bear, y'all. Oh, why the flowers in my spirit, y'all? You're out there. Let me know you're out there. If you have a question, go ahead and put it out. They're going to share it with me in our exec team group. Me. One more minute. One more minute. Let me know, type in where you're joining us from. YouTube folk, let me know you're out there. Facebook folk, website folk. Um, what am I missing? Every outlet, just let me know you're out there. I got my liberty. I'm finally free. Hey family, good morning. Hope everybody's doing outstanding. And hopefully that's not too much of a distraction back there. I just wanted to make sure I, I was up and on and everything was good. So uh looks like y'all can hear me all right. So I'm gonna jump on in and um just say good morning. Look, let me pray. God, thank you for our opportunity to be together. Thank you for everyone that's on the platforms. Thank you for our coffee chat. Thank you that from the rising of the sun until the going down of the name, it's the same. Your name is worthy to be praised. Thank you for another day. We're in our right mind. We have mobility in our limbs. We're grateful for all of it. We're going to give you thanks, God, for this day. Use us in a mighty way, God, and bless your people who are on this broadcast right now, this coffee chat. Give us a great remainder of our day. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, type in amen. Uh, so, hey, guys, listen, you know, if I'm if I'm traveling 
or if I'm out of the pulpit for whatever reason, like I have been, I, I miss you and I need to, I need to touch y'all. I need to interact with you. That's just the pastor in me. And so that's why I want to have a quick coffee chat. 30 minutes, we're going to be done all of this. I did not know. Shows you how God works. I did not know. And what, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Dunkin' Donuts guy, y'all. So, as you know, this past week, last week was anniversary of the first year anniversary of, of my roots, my mom's passing. And so, you know, I'm at the point now where I have to, I got to pack a room up. Um, haven't really moved anything in the, in the last year. So yesterday, and had not planned on sharing this in the coffee chat, but just shows you how God works. So yesterday, I went, last night, I was in her bedroom. I was opening up drawers, just kind of looking at things. And she uses all of her drawer space for like pictures and memorabilia, not clothes, but just things to celebrate the family. Well, lo and behold, lo and behold, um, she has, I got that upside down. She has a Rocky Mount Telegram front page from Wednesday, July 1st, 2015. Wednesday, July 1st, 2015. And the headline says, Word charges forward with expansion plan. Hopes to boost economy. And it's an article written by a guy named Corey Davis. And it talks about our plan, our dream, our hope to build out the Home Depot that we bought. That was eight years ago. Eight years ago, I stood in front of people on a Tuesday at 12 noon and I shared the vision. And we talked about there was going to be a gym. We talked about there was going to be a fitness center. We talked about there was going to be a school. We talked about there will be a banquet room. We talked about there will be a chapel. We talked about... Um, there will be a center for performing arts and worship. We talked about there will be a broadcast studio. I want you to get this in your spirit. None of it had physically manifested. We just talked about it in the spirit. We talked about it and we cast the vision. That was eight years ago. Today, eight years later, that work is fully complete. Praise God for y'all, for God's vision, for provision, for the favor that God gave us. Here's the piece that I want us to grab a hold of, y'all. God is just getting started. I want us really dreaming big. I want you dreaming big. I want you to know that, that God is able. I want you to know that I want your whole life to testify that God is good. I want every aspect of your life to be a witness that God is capable, that God is able, that God is willing, that God is powerful, that that. So, so every part of your life, do you get that in the spirit? I want you to get that because that's been my dream and hope for our church and for our membership that we use the word thriving, but the Lord has in my spirit about flourishing, right? Same thing, but it's about every area of my life being at peace and every area of my life fully living out to the full capacity that God has endowed me with. Every area of my life working synergistically together everything working together for good, everything working together to glorify God, that there's no space of lack, that there's no space of struggle, that there's no space of, of failure, that there's no space for defeat, that there's no space for mediocrity, that that's been the dream, y'all. Every area, faith and family and finances and fitness, every area, right? And so we're now at the next level. We, we cast a dream. We cast a vision eight years ago. The Lord brought it to pass. Somebody typed that in. We were able to do that. Say, God did that. God did that. God used us to do that. It got accomplished. The box got checked, built, built, done, done. We're seeing more people saved than ever before in the history of the church. Check, done, happening, right? There's a witness going forth. And so now next level stuff, y'all. Next level stuff. We can form a foundation to do this work in perpetuity. The paperwork's already been done. We're going to do that. We can enter into commercial real estate businesses and transactions so that there's income streams to enable us to do the work God is calling us to do. We can own a franchise. We, we can build apartments. We can build houses. We, we can grow a school and an academic environment. All of that is possible. We can have thrive zones in communities, one in Tar East Tarboro, one in Enfield, 
one in Wilson, you know, one in Johnson County, one in Wake County. We can have these thrive zones where our people are gathering together in missions and evangelism and touching people's lives. That is entirely possible. Somebody type in, we can do this. Y'all, when we band together, nothing is impossible. That there is a commanded blessing in unity. Uh, that there is a the blessing of God when we work together. There is evidence that God sent his son Jesus when we are unified. That's what I want our work to be about. That's what I want. That's what I'm asking you to sign up for. And so when we give, when we serve, when we sacrifice, there's no limitation. God is so big. Somebody type that in. God is so big. I want my whole life to testify that God is good. I want my whole life to testify that God is big, that he is strong that he is mighty, that he is awesome. And I'm sorry, I can't, I don't know what you're responding out there because I can't see it. I'll look at it later on um, today, but I want you to respond. I want you to type in dream bigger for yourself. You can start that business. You can grow that business. That business can advance. We have to dream bigger. We have to spend our money on people that look like us, people that have the passions we have, people that love the kingdom of God. We have to spend our resources in environments where we are not damaging what God is trying to do in our lives. We need to attach ourselves with people that are moving in the same direction. We can do this. We, we can grow the most successful small businesses. We can grow the most successful nonprofits. We can thrive in every area of life. I want us dreaming bigger. It's great that this is done. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to pay it off in full. We're going to get debt free. You're going to get debt free. Somebody type that in. I'm going to get debt free. I want you thinking about that. We talked about lowering debt by a million dollars this year. That's not off the table. We talked about losing a thousand pounds. That's not off the table, right? We've got to dream bigger. And so this is not the time for complacency. This is not the time to just say, oh, we've gotten it. We've arrived. No, 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 no. No, this is the time we're going to plow and do even greater work. Somebody type in dream bigger. <clears throat> If you have a question go ahead and type it in and they'll share it with me um somebody's telling me that facebook is muffled so um so type in dream bigger because that's number one here's the second thing i want to talk about second thing i want to talk about are areas of engagement this is word tabernacle culture and language i want you familiar with it type in area of engagement, area of engagement. Um, as you know, there are seven. This is not going away. We're not talking about it as much as you may thought we were, but this is not going away. I'm going to be talking about a whole lot more. Let me remind you of what these areas of engagement are and why they're important. First of all, there are seven of them. As a word, I, I want you familiar. I want you intimate as a partner. You don't have to be a member of our church, but you may be like, you know what? I really believe in the work of Word Tabernacle. Matter of fact, you know what? Let me let me just sit on that for a minute. I want to put an appeal out um, for 100 new partners this month. Before this month is over, we got a couple days left. 100 new partners, people that are like, look, I'm not a member of Word Tabernacle per se, but I'm benefiting from the teaching. I'm encouraged by the worship. I'm empowered by seeing God do the work he's doing. And I'm going to come alongside when y'all are doing things in the community. I'm going to come serve with you. <clears throat> I'm going to give a financial offering. Can't give my tithe because that I'm a member of another church. But I'm going to give something sacrificial to Word Tabernacle. <clears throat> I want to encourage you to do that. If you're willing to be a part. You, I'm not talking about you're, you're not talking about somebody who's a member. I'm talking about someone who's not a member. Maybe you're in another part of the country, but you believe in our work. You want to help us accomplish this vision, this dream standing up our foundation of getting debt free and then using our financial resources as a tool of equality so that the gospel can continue to go forth. I'm going to share some more about that with you in a minute. So I'm, 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 I'm going to solicit your support for partnership. So let me get back to our areas of engagement. There are seven of them. The first is educational attainment. Type that in. I want you to type these in. The first is educational attainment. Um, and, and we know the value of this. This is why we're focusing so heavily on things like fast for completion and literacy, because we've got to make sure 
that we're doing our part to educate our young people. And so educational attainment is big. This is why we ask for the child's report card when they come into the, the congregation and start actively serving in the youth ministry. I'll please make sure we have that report card because we want to make sure we're monitoring their growth, their success. We want to put programs in, in place to make sure we're educating the next generation um, of word ice and the next generation of young people in our community. So educational attainment. The second is in the area of health. Right. You've heard me say this all the time. I'm going to keep saying it because it is so true. It does not matter how anointed and how gifted and how well intentioned and how prayerful um, we are. It doesn't matter how oily you are. If you are too sick to execute the work God has called you to do, it is for naught. It just does not matter. You, we must be healthy, physically and emotionally healthy. It is the first bullet on every ministry. Health, health. We've got to do our part. You've heard me talk about this before. But when you leave Wake County and you start driving down Highway 64 going east, every time you hit another county east, life expectancy decreases by two years, which means the child born in Martin County has a 10-year lower life expectancy than the child born in Wake County. There's something fundamentally wrong about that. While we have a captive audience of people in the church, we need to make sure people are healthy. And so health is the second one. The third one is food security, is food security, making sure people have access to healthy foods, foods and fruits and vegetables, that they're eating less processed foods, that we're learning how to grow our own foods, because that's a, a form of emotional health, that's a form of physical health, and that's a form of economic health, right? When we grow our own fruits and vegetables, we make our own sauces, right? So food security. Uh, number three, housing. You know, how do we leverage the land we have on West Mount Drive and how do we purchase other plots of land so then we become developers and we enter into partnerships with other entities so that we can be the solution for trying to fix housing needs and housing issues so that people earning 40 or $50,000 a year have the ability to actually own a home, a safe, affordable home. Um, so housing is one of them. Um, global witness, right? That is our our Christian witness globally and locally. What does our work look like in, in the city of Rocky Mount, throughout the state of North Carolina, throughout our country and overseas? And how are we targeting that work? I'm not talking about you know a one shot here and a one shot there. I'm talking about really targeting it. Our ability to minister to widows and helping parents in the adoption process and building out wheelchair ramps and making sure there's the disaster recovery response. And, and then um, social action. You know, we have a municipal election coming up and we need to be talking more and more about our voter turnout, voter education. You're going to, you know, just because I'm not on the ballot doesn't mean we're not talking about it. We have to be engaging it as word. I, these are the areas of engagement I'm asking you to be talking about. You know, sometimes we talk about a bunch of stuff that's not life giving, don't matter to nobody. We need to start talking about these areas of engagement because this is where we're going to build out the ecosystem so that people can have a flourishing life. People can have a thriving life. You know, we've, we've got to speak truth to power and we've got to we've got to expose the areas of darkness. Let me give you an example of exposing areas of darkness. You know, going to a church where people saying, I'm praying for your child that they're going to do better in school. But then after they pray for you in church, they go to the voting polls and they vote for elected people that underfund the public education system that your child is in that they just prayed for. We have to speak to those kinds of issues. People praying that your cancer is going to be all right, but then they vote to keep to, to make sure that Medicare doesn't get Medicaid doesn't get expanded, or they vote against the best interests of the very thing they're praying about. That kind of hypocrisy has got to be exposed. And so we've got to talk about social action, social engagement how we engage ourselves politically, um, and then economic equity. Um, as you know, I'm a student of a couple of outstanding men through the years. One of them was a guy that was lovingly referred to as the Lion of Zion. His name was Leon Sullivan. Leon Sullivan was pastor of Zion Baptist Church in Philadelphia when I was a child. Zion was at the corner, it is still at the corner of Broad and Venango. In the city of Philadelphia, you don't have a 14th Street you have a 13th Street, you have Broad Street, and then you have 15th Street. So in essence, Broad Street would be 14th Street if we had one in Philadelphia. 
So Zion Baptist Church is at Broad and Venango, which basically will be 14th and Venango. Well, I was raised at 11th and Venango. And so I live three and a half blocks from Zion Baptist Church. I watched them build Progress Plaza. I watched them form a trust in the late, early 70s, mid 70s, late 70s. I watched them build housing for teachers. I watched them form OIC. Um, I watched those things happen. And this is what Leon Sullivan said when he started understanding the power of economics. They raised $400,000. This was in the late 60s, early 70s. Leon Sullivan said, I learned that $400,000 can help fix race relations. What he was saying was that when there's economic equity, people treat you different. That's why when he authored the Sullivan principles against economic sanctions for apartheid and General Motors amongst other corporations in America um, executed and implemented those financial principles, that was when you had the dismantling of apartheid in Africa. And similarly, y'all, as long as we are going to people that's funding and we're, we're paying people and they're funding our oppression, there's never going to be, econ until there's economic equity, there will not be racial equity. There will not be educational equity, right? We are going to have to create that. Jesus cares about these things. And because he cares about them, we should care about them. I want every word I intimate about our areas of engagement. Somebody type that in, intimate about our areas of engagement. Let me check, make sure I don't have any questions coming through, because if you have one, let me know. Um, all right, so real quick, educational attainment, health and wellness, food security, social action, housing, economic equity, global witness. Somebody say these are areas of engagement, right? So that's the second thing I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about us dreaming bigger. I wanna talk about our areas of engagement. Here's the third thing I want to talk about today is our East City service coming up. I want to make sure everybody understands this. I know it's crazy that we shut, a, we shut buildings down three times a year. We do it over holiday weekend, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day weekend. Well, Labor Day weekend is coming up. That's going to be September 3rd. Sunday, September 3rd, we're not in the building, but we are worshiping. Somebody type, we are worshiping. I want to encourage you to have a watch party. Don't just sit at home with your pajamas on. Get your family together. Get some friends together. You know, gather around a computer, gather around the TV, put it up on YouTube. Um, but I want us worshiping. I want us making sure we're leading people to Jesus. We should be going into the nursing homes. We should be going into some of our community rooms. This is where we implement the Bless Francis model, right? Blessing them, B-L-E-S-S. -S. I taught that. Make sure you catch that teaching. That means we, we're praying with them, we're listening to them, right? We're serving them, and we're sharing our testimony with them, we're eating with them, right? So that's the blessing them. Um, and then Francis, our friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, um, co-workers, enemies, strangers, everyone we can share Jesus with. May we not, may I not be the one who didn't share Jesus with somebody. Somebody type that in, may I not be that one. I want to make sure I'm sharing Jesus with people. I want to make sure they're um, getting saved, joining a church, fellowship in a place where they can be empowered. And so East City, September 3rd, y'all, a week from tomorrow, a week from tomorrow, we're going to worship together digitally. I got a great message. Um, it's going to be a wonderful service, but I want to make sure we're eating together and worshiping together. Next thing I want to talk about is the following Sunday, September 10th. Y'all, that's our HBCU Divine Nine Sunday. This is going to be great. This is, I'm excited about this. We have the Chancellor of Elizabeth City State University with us that Sunday. Uh, I want everybody wearing, rep your organization, whatever it is. If you went to an HBCU, rep it. If you're in a Divine Nine um, so, so fraternity sorority, rep it. If you're not in either, whatever, wherever you went to college, rep it. Wherever you went to high school, rep it. Um, if you're a Mason, rep it. If you're in a social group, rep it. I just want us to, to elevate our social agency um, in that worship service. We're going we're gonna to present um, a, a check to Elizabeth City State um, to fund the education there, the same way we did several years ago with Bennett College when they were having struggle with their accreditation. Y'all, we're going to step up. I'm going to talk about the June 29th Supreme Court decision that Sunday. That, that Supreme Court decision on affirmative action that effectively 
y'all ended race conscious admission practices. And it, I got a whole lot to say about that and, and, and what's wrong with that decision. But what it's going to mean are that our HBCUs, our, our black churches, and our divine now organization, which are our three oldest agencies amongst African Americans in our country. Black church been around since 1773. Do you hear that? 1773. Our black college has been around since 1837. And we started with our black um, sororities and fraternities in 1906. We got to form a triangle of those three entities so that we work together to bring about some really good stuff. So the chancellor is going to be with us. Um, the gospel choir from Elizabeth City State is going to be with us. This is going to be the launching point of an annual event where we start to bring together our HBCUs. We're gonna start here in North Carolina, then it's gonna expand statewide, I mean, nationally. And we're gonna have HBCUs that we're gonna get early admission decisions. We're gonna help people with FAFSA completion. We're gonna get financial aid packages done. We're gonna have um, um, early decisions. We're gonna have scholarship opportunities. This is gonna be an annual event. Somebody type in an annual event. We're just getting getting things, getting you, getting your out your um, appetite, your palate ready for it, okay? But this is going to be a major hub here in the um, in, in the southeastern part of the country, and I want you to mark your calendar for September 10th. Afterwards, we already have Amazon as a sponsor. I was on a call yesterday. Amazon signed is is going to be a sponsor um, of this event. Um, we ha we have legislators coming from around the state that will be with us. Uh, from senators, state house, congressional. So we have I mean, we have chancellors coming. We have members of the North Carolina Legislative Black Caucus Foundation coming. Um, we're gonna have some food trucks here. We're gonna have um, an issues briefing immediately following service and a gathering and a meet and greet. Um, we want Elizabeth City State alumni to step up, you know, because we want to be able to we want to present them with a big check, y'all, and um, and we need your help to be able to do that. Okay. It's going to be a great event. I really are asking. I want to pack the church out, y'all. We're going to pack the church out. Then next Tuesday after that, if y'all still with me, say, Pastor, I'm with you. If y'all know this is good stuff, say, Pastor, this is good stuff. Next, Bible study resumes on September 12th. I am so amped. Bible study resumes September 12th. I'm looking for questions. If you haven't, put them down real quick. But here's the deal about Bible study resuming. We're coming back to something different. I'm going to, I'm going to um, bring us back to a concert of prayer. If you've never experienced a concert of prayer at Word Tabernacle, you don't want to miss this. And if you're in the community, you need to be in the room. Okay. I know some of y'all East City folk, but you live like a block away. I need y'all in the room. So what a concert. Now, I'm going to still teach on Tuesday, September 12th, but I'm only going to teach for 15, 20 minutes. And then we're immediately moving into prayer. And then we're going to have prayer, a worship song, prayer, a worship song, prayer, a worship song. You're going to have a prayer guide to be able to journal what God is saying to you. And I really am believing for a major move of God. I'm looking for everybody present. OK, this is a concert of prayer. We used to do this. Back in our old campus, it's been a long time since we've done a concert of prayer. And this got triggered in our spirit uh, when we were at a conference in, at First Baptist of Glenard. And I was like, wow, you know what I was saying to Kyle and Stephanie and Cedar, we're like, you know what? We need to get back to this. We, we got away from this. This is an example of something we need to get back to. So concert of prayer, September 12th. I need you present for that. And then here's the last thing I want to say. I hope this has been helpful. Member feedback. I started having meetings with like leaders and staff um, and saying, listen, I want you to answer these five questions for me. I want to, I want to ask the members to send me an email. Pastor at wordtab.net. Pastor at wordtab.net. And this is what I want you to, to answer for me. Number one, what are we doing right? What do you think we're doing right? Um, and, and we want to keep doing those things. Okay. Number two, what are we doing wrong? And those are things that we should either stop doing or we need to improve upon. Number three, what's confusing? What's confusing? Those are the things we need to clarify. Number four, what's missing? 
Those are the things we need to add. And I've gotten some amazing responses. We're going to be a better church. Somebody's going to somebody type it in. We're getting better. We're getting better. And then number five, what is the most important mechanism for you to receive information from your church? Is it is it text messages? Is it social media? Is it ministry matters? Is it the weekly call on Thursday? Like when you when, if you only could choose one, what is that pr primary way in which you get information intersections? monthly newsletter. I want to know those five things. So would you email me, pastor at wordtab.net? Share your heart. Share your heart. I want our church to become better and better. I think part of the reason we're growing, y'all, this summer so far, 115 people joined the church. <laughs> I mean, wow, right? Um, and, and so, but we want to keep getting better. We don't want to take any of that for granted. And so those were the things that I wanted to talk about. We're going to leave this out so that you can see it. I'm checking to make sure I don't have any questions before I log us off. Um, question from YouTube, where does redistricting fall in this foundational vision? That's a great question. Redistricting falls in, if you're meaning political redistricting of lines, that falls in social action. Redistricting falls in social action. We need to be talking about redistricting, what those new lines look like, um, the, and what will be the impact on gerrymandering and the impact in terms of um, legislators, in terms of the courts. Um, in terms of executive branch. And so that's where that comes in. Thank you for that. Well, we have new Bible study again. Thank you for that question. I, I, we do not anticipate returning yet to noon Bible study. Um, we're going to focus heavily on getting people here at 7 p.m. I know for some of our older members, our first gen members, you know, it's not the most convenient because in the wintertime, it starts getting dark a little sooner. Um, we're trying to be responsive to that. We may look at the possibility of starting Bible study just a little bit earlier in the future so that we can get people home a little bit quicker. We just have to make sure it's going to work with our youth ministry and all of that. But for right now, but we do have once a month, Wednesday in the Word. And so one Wednesday a month at 12 noon is Wednesday in the Word. I want to encourage you. I'm going to start cycling through that preaching. Our other ministers are cycling through that preaching. We'll have outside ministers preaching. We're going to always have food and fellowship afterwards. So that's a great opportunity for you to come out, I'm expecting all my first gen folk. I'm expecting folk that have a flexible work schedule. I mean, yeah, you can watch it on the East City campus, but you know, you can't eat a sandwich that we provide on East City campus. And so um, that is another opportunity to worship at 12 noon. Okay. Not Tuesday Bible study, but we do have Wednesday in the Word. Um, make sure there's no more questions, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get us off, y'all. I really appreciate y'all. There may be some other questions. I will check back on the broadcast. So, in summary. We're dreaming bigger, discussing, discussing more of our areas of engagement, East City Campus worship coming up, HBCU Divine Nine Sunday coming up, concert of prayer, on, we return from Bible study, member feedback. I do want to say we are waiting for our construction drawings to come in, which is why we haven't been able to start the project in the building on Hunter Hill Road next to the Reach Center. It is still very much on the radar. It's very much alive. There's been a delay. In construction drawings, a lot of those contractors are really backed up. The moment we get them back um, from our plumbing, mechanical, and electrical engineers, our, as PM and E is called, y'all, as soon as our PM and E drawings come in, we can get our construction drawings, our demolition done, and we can go ahead and get that building knocked out. It's going to happen this year because we do need believe it's going to meet a significant need in our community, right? So I do want to raise that because we talked about that in our earlier coffee chat. So look, can I tell you I love you? I love you. I'm grateful to be, serve as your pastor. It means so much to me that you are a part of our ministry and that you're growing with us and that you're serving with us and that you're giving to the ministry. Thank you for trusting your walk with us. I hope you feel empowered and encouraged by what I shared at the beginning that the Rocky Mount article on Wednesday, July 1st, 2015, talked about everything we would do. And y'all, we did it. We did it. And so we're checking the boxes. We're doing the work God is calling us to do. Now it's time to dream bigger and do even more. I love y'all with everything in me. I'm grateful for you. Can't wait to worship tomorrow. Hope everyone has a great rest of your day. I'm signing off. Love y'all.